Hello pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James with another assembly video of the brand new Freewing 90mm FA-18C Hornet. Uh, this is in the Blue Angels livery, obviously, and just a gorgeous jet. Now, uh, obviously for the purpose of this build video, as always, we're gonna run through the spec, we're gonna do an unboxing, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step build, and then at the end we go over all the features, we walk around and show you the battery bay, things like that. Um, but obviously this one's a little different because I received this model way early. So this wouldn't be a pre-production, but it's early production, maybe like a first run. A lot of testing happened on this exact model before it got sent all the way from China to me. So uh, this video was a little different. I, I didn't even get the box with the regular box art you guys are going to get. And my plane might have some features that uh, you'll see in the video that are just going to be a little different from the final version that will arrive to customers. One little note, fun note, a lot of people on a lot of our videos were asking, where's a gray one? I want a gray one because I want to put it in your own scheme. You want ordinance, you want scaleness, not just blue angels. And the beauty was we were always planning on doing that anyway. Way, a gray one was going to come later but based on customer feedback we put a poll out there people want to have it at release and uh, Freewing believes they'll be able to do that for you guys so uh, thank you for voting on that and you should see a gray one as well uh, come release time and we're not sure about liveries on that it might just be a primed gray you do it yourself keep Cali busy uh, as we like to say but either way you should have a gray version anyway uh, we'll be available with this one as well. So let's get started with the build and the first thing we're going to go over is the spec. So now the spec on the FA-18C Hornet you see in front of you. Uh, let's start with the wingspan. It's 41 inches and the length of the model is about 57 inches. Uh, so it is a nice big scale 90 millimeter bird. It's going to be running the same power system that you guys might have seen or flown on the 90mm F4 6S version. So that's a 3748-1750 kV brushless outrunner. That's going to have a 9-blade EDF fan. And it's going to be running on 130 amp ESC with the EC5 connector, as usual. as what you'd expect from Freewing. But that's the basic spec for the F18. So now, let's take it out of the box. So now as you see here in the unboxing, I didn't have the regular box it would come in, but I believe I have the regular foam inserts. Again, this model had been pre-flown before I ever received it, so it was put together, taken apart, put it in a box, sent back to me. Uh, so, But as you see, everything looks really beautiful, even though it's a first-run production. The paint scheme and the color is a gorgeous spot-on match to the real Blue Angels. Uh, when you get your model out of the kit, you'll see that most of the decals will already be applied. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But uh, the foam finish is nice. I mean, take a look at the wings. This is all a screw together construction. So it takes two screws for each main wing, two screws for the full flying uh, horizontal stabilizers, three screws to get your vertical stabilizers in, and then all the little peripheral details, the baggie with your screws, things like that are all in and packaged as nicely as you'd expect from Freeway. So now let's get into a step-by-step -step build. All right, so step-by-step -step build. Again, I didn't have a manual available to me, but like most Freewing models now, you know what to expect. So I take these four screws. So there's gonna be two in each horizontal stabilizer, and you can see on the bottom how that connects. You're gonna see two grooves on the rod. So that's where these flat, ended screws are gonna sit to keep it in place. So basically you insert the rod into the fuselage, then put the horizontal stab over it, and then just take the two screws and screw it together, and you're done with step one. So next step is your vertical stabilizers. This is gonna take six screws total, three for each vertical stab. You'll see that, at least on my version, the uh, rudder servos were already attached, so that could be different for yours, uh, so you can't quote me on that. But very easy to install. You'll see there's two screws on the top and then one on the side. So you basically just plug in the rudder servo and then tuck it in a little bit, and then the vertical stabilizer is gonna sit nice and flush and just drive in your three screws for one side and then repeat the process for the second one and you're done with step two. All right, third step is gonna be your main wings. And this, like most new free wing models, is only gonna be two screws and a ribbon cable. So you can easily see access to the ribbon cable available to you. So you're just gonna slide in the spar, then you're gonna slide your wing over the top, 
make sure the ribbon cable is plugged in, line up the other spar that's in the wing, slide it on, and then drive in your two screws. These are the bigger ones that you see here. And you'll be done with the main wing, then just repeat that for the other side. And you're done with step three. So now at this stage, you will have four remaining screws, and those are just going to be for your side rails on the main wings. So you can see how those go. They only fit one way, so you're going to have the part where you could see our MWS, the ordnance, the little plastic grooves to slip ordnance on to what would be a military version, like a gray version. But you'll see that there. That's going to be on the outside, as you see. And then just drive in those four screws, and you're virtually done with the build of the F-18. So next you'll have all your peripheral bits. You do get a couple antennas. There's two yellow ones. Those are gonna go right on top. And then you're gonna have a blue one that goes on the bottom of the nose. You're gonna have two pitot tubes as well, one on each side, they're under the nose. And then you have two ventral fins, which are right on the wing root glove. Then you got your included nose cone and very nicely done. You got not only the magnets, but you do have a piece of plywood that goes into the fuse to uh, just give it a little rigidity. But it is a mostly foam nose cone where just the tip is plastic, but the rest is. So it's pretty light. You shouldn't have any problems with that falling off uh, on a hard landing or anything. So now at this stage in the game, you will have a fully built up F-18C Hornet. So the only thing you're going to have to do is attach the control rods to the flaps and the ailerons. And that should be easily done. Just go by the book here that you see with the picture of which ones go where. So now once you have your plane bound up and most of your control rods installed, you're gonna use these last two plastic bits. These are gonna cover the elevator servos. So you can see the elevator servos are exposed right now and you wanna make sure your servos are centered and everything before you just tack glue these two little plastic covers on. But that'll be the last thing you do because once you have the elevator all in place and everything's good, you can tack glue on these two little plastic pieces and it hides the elevator servo nicely. It's probably my favorite feature even though it's so minor it's one of my favorite features about this f-18 is that those elevator servers are completely hidden and very easily removed you could just peel it back if you ever have to get access to it but just a nice little touch from free wing that i appreciate a lot so let's move on to some features so there you have it guys that will get you a fully built up F-18C Hornet that you have in front of you. Last thing you would have to do is in the out of the box, I did not get a full decal set, but you guys are gonna have decals for the numbers. So you'll have seven numbers available to you for the tail. That's the only decal that won't be put on and the Buno, which will go behind, I'll show you in a second, on that elevator cover. Uh, those will be the only decals that you're gonna get in the box. We're actually not gonna include the pilot's names. It was just a little tough with, uh, you know, I guess licensing and thing. You don't want to use people's names that you don't know. There's a lot of legal issues that could go go with that. So if you're going to want to put a pilot name on it, you're probably going to have to call Cali to just finish that little bit off. But for the most part, that'll do it. So let's walk around it. And I think first things first, while we have it here, let's show you the battery bay. Now, again, mine was early production. So I had a lot of servo leads in here that were longer than what the main production is. So I have a bit of a rat's nest in the back, but you can see I have a 5,000 milliamp Admiral 6S sitting right there and it fits perfectly. There's no reason that I wouldn't be able to fit. Let me grab some other batteries. I have the new 6,000 Admiral and I did not fly it on this yet. I didn't get it in time before we did any of the flying but she fits in there perfectly as well. You should have no problem. That's now our largest pack, or even the 5100 is gonna fit nicely as well, and you're just gonna put it on its side if you wanna get it in there. So you have really no worries about battery space. I know some guys wanna to try to probably put an 8S system in here and go with two batteries. I think you're gonna have more than enough room, and it's really roomy in the back. You're gonna have the MCB-E is gonna be pre-installed. A little tough to see, but it is all the way in the back behind my gyro here. So you have a lot of space on the plywood for everything you need and easy access to the gear and such. So it's a nice big uh, body for what is normally a pretty narrow fuselage. So that's a really nice feature. And again, it's just a little clasp that and a magnet that's gonna keep that uh, battery hatch on so that's nice walking around the front you can see again we'll show you the nose cone very easily removed and put back on so again you got the plywood piece so that's just going to give it more rigidity shouldn't have to worry about that you know i can't even hit it off which is nice 
So now let me get her plugged in so you can see the lights because there are three LEDs on the uh, model itself. So here we go. Open it up. Let me get the five. I'm just going to lay my 5,000 in here. Just to get her plugged in. Where's my lead? There we go. Perfect. So you see, you have your nav lights, you have green and red on the left, and the strobe on top, which is nice. And again, you can move those LEDs around on the MCBE if you wanted this to stay on, if you're trying to fly at the dusk and you just want something to see. You know, you could always play. There's a lot of empty space in that uh, multifunction control box on the inside, which is great. And another feature I love, guys, if you look down from the top, you can see the BL bypass. Um, you could see the holes going right through to the bottom. I love that they molded that into the F-18C. It's one of the iconic features of it. And then you can see next to the intakes, there's also a little gap there as well. Uh, just very nicely well done um, for fun airflow and uh, should be really appreciated by a lot of scale guys who love the F-18C. One other feature I love is the hidden nylon hinges on the rudder. I think that's a really nice feature. And they, they buried the servo pretty deep in there, so it's low vis, we call it. But you could always paint the tops of these servos uh, blue, and you probably never even see it if, you, uh, if that's something that really bothers you. I know it bothers a lot of guys, but hey, it's a foam model. You gotta, you gotta take give and take in certain spots to get it as nice as it can be. So let me get my cradle out, and I'm gonna flip this bad boy upside down. Let's talk about the landing gear, at least show you that and some of the other cool features of it. Get it on there nice. Perfect, so starting with the nose gear, you do see again, all aluminum trailing link suspension struts, which is great. And I love on the main gears that they're cantilevered uh, as best they could as like what the real F-18 would be. And I know the Blue Angels one, I believe these are white. So if you wanted to paint these white, uh, that'll probably look even more uh, scale, which is great. Nose gear does have a servo. Let me slide that over to the camera. You have a nose steering servo inside and all the gear doors are mechanical. So there's no servos that open and close them. So that helped preserve some weight. So you're flying on the on the 6SP and P, you're on the F4 power system. And the F4 is just by nature, just a bit of a heavier bird anyway than this one. So you really can see the thrust. I hope you guys can see that in the raw flights and the flight reviews we did. It's got a lot of power. It moves almost like an 80. Uh, you have no lack of power getting out of sticky situations. And um, a lot of that is owed to trying to keep it as light as you possibly can, which is great. So continuing on, obviously the F-18C, this is, this is a new ground up design. That's something we wanted to make sure people know about the F-18. Uh, we didn't, this isn't a V3 of the older 90 millimeter Super Hornet we used to have, which was EPS foam. We didn't, you can't change a mold like that. This is a brand new mold. So they had to mold the, the rounded intakes that you see here that is iconic with this version of the F-18 and what the Blue Angels have been flying for so many years up until what, two years, they're gonna change them out finally. But uh, you know, it's been iconic bird for them. So it's really nice to see that done here. Again, the mains, the cantilevered, and I could push on it a little bit just to show you they have nice bounce to them. You're gonna have no problem with any bounces. I never even saw a bounce on a landing. And Patrick, we did a lot of them. We flew it around a good number of times. Again, mechanical spot on the, uh, the back of the mains, as you can see there. So it's just gonna hit this plastic piece and that's gonna close the doors spring loaded. And the second the gear opens, uh, they pop right out, which is, which is awesome. You do have cheater vent inside to give you more airflow. And you have three screws or four screws rather gives you access to the door. Now, disregard, I had to paint a little bit. If you guys noticed in the uh, announcement video, people all called it out, the run cam fell off. I put Velcro here, had the run cam to get that shot both ways. And the first flight we did, pulling up for high Gs and it just ripped the paint actually and the Velcro came off. So I went to Home Depot and got myself a color sample. So actually I'll show you what the numbers are. If you guys want to get a color sample, it's pretty much a perfect match. And I just painted that up before I did this. So run over there. This is the best stuff. The bear, this, uh, I pretty much have like seven or eight jars now for all the aircraft we got. Take a Home Depot. 
You know, huh? Home Depot, yeah. Home, Home Depot. Depot. Put a little Home Depot logo. We're giving you guys business. You're going to become Cali and Home Depot. That'll get it done for all your customizations. Um, and then on the back, people didn't notice, and we didn't even show it in the video. We sort of forgot. You do have a tail hook. Uh, we glued it on. It will be glued on for yours, so it's more of a display. Uh, it's more static display uh, than actual use, but I'm sure some guys are going to want to... I know J RC Jet Dude will probably want to make this work, and he will, but I just peeled it up there and it took off some of my paint, but it does move. It does have, you know, actuation if you want. So you can definitely do more with it if you wanted to, and occasionally on a hard landing, because we only tack glued it on. It wasn't glued when I got it. So on one hard landing, I think it, you know, it popped down, but said, hey, if there was a wire there, you would have landed it. So that was fine. And then the last feature again is these elevator covers which is great so i'm just gonna peel one back because it's so simple to peel off and then glue back on it takes no problem so if you ever had an issue you wanted to get back into the the servo very easily you just peel that back and i just use foam tack and you have full access to your servos which is awesome i love that they were able to hide it again probably my favorite detail of this <laughs> of this f18 is just it's the little things right in modeling it's just the little things that we all go over that's just well thought out obviously now let's check the flaps while you have you up, upside down I know alpha was excited to show these so the, the the hinges for the flaps obviously you got low vis again on the uh, at least on the flap servo it's tough to see and if you wanted to paint that you'd probably never see it at all um, but the but the flaps themselves these hinge lines are just awesome the flaps actually aren't attached there's no foam hinge at all with the nylon hinges it is all going to be you know it's a separate piece of foam so there's actually a space between the uh the aileron when you look at it from a top down and alpha even likes when you go full barn doors he said when you're flying at yourself it's cool to see through in a way you know if there's sun behind it you'll see through the uh the flap which is just a cool feature but nice big flaps you have your ailerons again all funky full flying stab i just have it on the high rate setting and she looks really really nice guys i think people are really going to enjoy this one it's great to finally get a legacy jet i know this is an f-18 that you know everybody seems to model the super hornet we did it you know there's a lot of versions of the super hornet but there weren't too many versions of this type of hornet and it's great to be able to do it and also pay homage to the blues we know they're not going to be flying this version of the f-18 for too much longer so if you get a chance to go out and see them in this i know i'm going to try to do that uh one more time before they move on this is what this is what i always thought the blue angels are to me i was born in 1982 for the most part this was the only jet I recognize as Blue Angels. So uh, I, I really, really love it. But guys, that's gonna do it for uh, this assembly video. If you have any questions, by all means, leave them in the comments of this video or head over to Hobby Squawk. We have forums for every one of our jets. This one's no different. Jump in the forum, talk to the guys there. You can talk to owners uh, when people get them in there and you can talk to Motion RC staff about these models there as well. And as always, like, share, and subscribe, all things Motion RC. Look out for the next videos, hit that like button, and we'll see you next time.